So next up is open mic for public comment. Um, we will have, let's see, right now it is 6.43. So we basically have 45 minutes. We'll give everyone three minutes each until the clock strikes 7.30. Um, let me give you some rules again, just to remind everyone. State your name and address for the record. You're going to address only me, not individual board members. You will not mention any board members by name. You will not threaten board members. You will not threaten to come to their homes. You will not th threaten to come to their places of work. Uh, this is public comment, not public conversation. So. The conversation may just be one-sided with you giving comments. We're going to observe the same rules of, of uh, decorum and good conduct applicable to members of the city council. Making personal, impertinent, profane, and slanderous remarks or becoming boisterous while addressing the, while addressing the board will result in, in your speaking privilege being taken away from you for the remaining of this session. Only one person may approach the microphone at any one time, and only that person at the microphone will be allowed to speak. And we will be, my, the audience will be respectful to the speakers as well. And with that, we will get started. Speaker number one. Are we ready? Yes, we're ready. Okay. My name is Dr. Pamela Grayson, 6812 Wilhelmina Drive, Dallas, Texas. I am here, first of all, I appreciate your decorum as well, but I noticed it wasn't stopped when we were called thugs. If somebody's gonna call me a thug, please do write and call me Dr. Thug. Secondly, it was also stated that Changa and Dominique, who will speak for himself, were called, were reached out to by two members of this board. I immediately picked up the phone and I called Changa Higgins. That is a bold-faced lie. Now, the two members that are saying this, we're supposed to have trust in them. We already don't want you here. But then we're going to get up here and lie. I am point blank asking for an investigation into that statement. They need to provide proof of where they have reached out to do these two individuals, or they need to accept that they have lied, and I expect repercussions for that. To get up here and lie is not how this needs to start. We are messing up already. Compromising character and integrity, which should be the foundation of this very board for everyone. Again, if you don't want to be here and you don't intend to do right, leave. Again, I want an investigation into those comments. I want proof that Changa was reached out to. Proof that Dominique was reached out to. Otherwise, these people need to eat the lies that they've told. My name is Dr. Grayson, and again, if you're going to call me a thug, make sure you say Dr. Thug Grayson. Thank you. You know, um, once my great-grandmother said, when I was about 10 years old at a family reunion to a group of us, that the truth would set you free. She also said that lies will equal bondage and corruption. My name is Carol Harrison Lafayette. I live on the Grand Prairie side. Uh, Casey Thomas is the city council. I, I have gotten out of the hospital a few days ago from bronchitis, but I could not miss this day. I am very mad. I'm very angry. I'm very disappointed. I hold a lot of pain here today because I depended on the Dallas policeman to help me with my son, Clayton Harrison, who went into the military, he served in the military. He got out on the military on honorable discharge because he got hurt in the military and suffers from PTSD. PTSD is real. My son does not have a criminal record. He was having a mental breakdown on August the 3rd 2019, I called the hospital, Hickory Trail. The nurse told me, call to get some assistance with the police to help get him out there. 
I called the non-emergency number for Dallas, explained that my son, Clayton, was having a mental breakdown, that he went into the military, he was hurt, he got on an honorable discharge, and I needed to get him to the hospital. Well, I asked for a sergeant also, because I'm thinking that a sergeant would know how to handle somebody who had, suffers from mental illness. When they got out there, they body slammed my son. I had paperwork in my hand showing that he suffered from mental illness. My, I didn't, that call was not for criminal. They charged my son for assaulting three police officers. It was nine white officers that showed up. My son was sent to Lusteric instead of a mental hospital. They lied on a police report. The bond was $90,000. What mother who is single, who dialed 911 to get assistance for their child has that kind of money in, in this day's economy? I didn't have $90,000. I didn't get any ha help from any activists, no leaders, no nobody. I put it on social media, reaching out for help. God help me. Because I got a phone call after five months of him being incarcerated, the Dallas County Jail. To top that off, he was put in the general population and his hand was broke in the, in, in the cell, cell door. It was broke. Five months in jail behind a lie. On top of that, the sergeant lied on him. Three, two of the officers dropped charges. You know what the attorney told me in the DA? They never ever seen officers drop charges for assault, but they did. The sergeant is the only one that didn't. An independent investigator told me that that sergeant is getting disability. He was been a sergeant, a police officer for 30 years in Dallas. He said that my son kicked him in the groin. Now, I did a complaint with Eternal Affairs. I got a letter the next day. Uh, 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 the next day, they conclude their investigation, and when I did get the letter, they said that nothing, nothing, nothing was done wrong, but yet the officers dropped. I want justice for my son. He has a criminal record. Just last week, the attorney called, and the DA told me that they're not going to press charges against him. They're not going to go with the case. They're going to give him a, a, a conditional bond. They put him on one year, one year. He can't even work, and he served for this country. My son wants to work, and he wants a job. I want justice for my son. He suffers from PTSD, and any one of you all are candidates Excuse me, who have mental illness. And I want justice for Clayton Harrison because he did not deserve to get arrested. I'm standing in the voice for the young men who were killed across our country because police officers are saying they feared for their lives. My son is alive. Okay, ma'am, I'm you sorry. You all know we... that if my son would have assaulted three police officers, he would have been murdered. They would have tased him. But instead, they gave him charges, investigated, and get justice for Clayton Harrison. Excuse me. Do you, do you want to file a complaint today? Okay, yeah, if we can we can take care of you. We can get um, Thank you Victoria take care of you, okay? I'll try to do my best to follow up on that one. But I I will uh like to add the fact that uh what we are trying to look for as citizens, we're trying to finally realize that we're trying to be taken seriously. I uh have filed several complaints against uh police because it seems like they have a sense of preferential treatment toward who they uh, tend to as far as uh, getting diligence done, and then others just simply get ignored. I filed several complaints against uh, a neighbor that was uh, that, that started off by trying to attack my dad. Then he uh, got in my mother's face, and then eventually he got to me after I had already told him it wasn't going to be happening anymore. I have uh, filed uh, a, a lawsuit because the same neighbor called the police and then notified 311 about, about my cars being parked in front of my house and in front of other neighbors' houses as if he had a right to file any type of complaint. I understand the city ordinance about the 24-hour rule. 
I've read it, I've looked it over, just like I also overlooked what the, uh, I looked over the, uh, what the preference is for qualified immunity. But when police officers take it upon themselves to break the law blatantly and then hide behind that, that puts us all in a very bad bind because we're trying to be citizens out here trying to live a life normal as, as, as it already is for whatever normalcy. But then to have police officers take your vehicles just because they feel like they can, or they feel like they're entitled because they have a badge, I just think that just puts a black eye on everything that we're trying to do here. And I think the main thing we got to get back to is a simple word. It's called integrity. Seems like it's not working these days. You know, when you call and file complaints and finally the police come back after six months of me complaining, they came over to the house uh, last Friday to ask us, what can we do for you? Say, after six months, I guess nothing. Fortunately, no one died this time. But we also know about other cases where people have died. I have uh, here the videos of the incident where the police came over to the house, putting a sticker on there, and then would they didn't want to come out to, for me to show them that the cars worked. And, I, uh, and then I also got on the video the neighbor that caused the incident coming out trying to pick a fight. And nothing was done when I uh, reported this incident. And like I said, this was three separate incidents that I reported and nothing being done. Internal affairs give it a run around, mayor's office give it a run around, but then they get mad at me because I sued them. Well, gave me no choice. And as I will be telling them tomorrow, I will keep coming until something is done. So I'll uh, be having a meeting with the assistant city manager here in a moment to see if we can get something started. So uh, thank you. And uh, I'm Reggie Ruffin, Just Cause Coalition. Thank you, sir. You, you filed a, a complaint in the last meeting, didn't you? Yes, I did. Okay, has anyone followed up with you? Have uh, you received the email? No. <laughs> okay, we'll, 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 we'll follow up, okay? Right. Thank you. Hi, my name is Sarah abdul Matulab. I'm from District 1. Mm -hmm. um, I want to just repeat my comments quickly, kind of echoing before um, my disappointment that there are board members who have publicly stated that they do not believe in oversight. But I had a, a few questions. I was wondering if I could address questions to you. Um, it's really public comments. So. Okay, comments slash questions. Yeah. So um, I was wondering if the rules related to the meeting decorum um, and just rules about meetings, are those posted publicly? Um, and I had asked previously if there would be an opportunity for the public to actually provide feedback on those rules. Um, so I, it seems like the board just got them today, but would, since that has been delayed, would we be able to see what is being proposed so that we could address those items at the next meeting? Uh, they should have been a part of the agenda okay. that was posted. Okay, great. Um, and then I find a, that there's a problem with not being able to mention board members by name. It doesn't seem like that's relevant at all. I get not name calling, um, but it doesn't seem like that's an efficient way <laughs> um, to go about things. Um, I also think that there should be a portion of the meeting um, or some accountability to for us to be able to learn about certain board members' positions on things, whether that's through questions that we write down and ask them in advance, but I feel like they should be publicly accountable for answering some questions. Um, and uh, will there be a, it seems like there will be a committee for community engagement, and when will that start meeting? Or what are the details with that? Um, we, we, the board is reviewing the, the board rules. That, that, is, that is a part of the board rules, though, establishing that committee. Okay, okay, got it. Um, just a suggestion, I think that once that is in place, um, I think that there should be a central place for any of the public events um, so that there is some accountability and just awareness uh, for the community of what's going on so um, that it's just across districts in case people want to attend ones in other districts that they may not, you know, may not know about. Um, and also I feel like that committee should address um, some type of requirement for the number and type of events that each district holds, um, that some of them are, should be open to the public and well advertised and promoted. Um, I think that's all my comments for now. Thank you. Yeah. 
Uh, hello, uh, my name is Callie Cohn. Uh, I'm a, a district resident of Councilmember Medrano's district. I want to thank the board uh, for taking the action today to investigate uh, Diamond Ross's death. Uh, I, I think it's an important use of your powers and an important way to inaugurate this board. Uh, I would like to ask, though, uh, that the board uh, consider the way that it has uh, that it has started the investigation. I think when we hear about the frustrations from the community about time and time over what has happened, um, what we hear about is oftentimes frustration that there is a conclusion that nothing was done wrong in accordance with department procedure or policy. And so one of the important powers that this board has is to look at departmental procedure and policy and say, is this in line with best practice? Is this in line with our community's values? And is this upholding the life and dignity of everybody here in Dallas? And so I would ask this board to consider directly asking its investigator not only to consider sort of the investigation of her death and whether it complied with departmental procedure and protocol, but also whether the departmental procedure and protocol that uh, is applicable in the case is appropriate. Uh, the second thing that I'd like to mention is that uh, there has been a lot of discussion at, at these meetings about uh, public safety and uh, the crime rate in Dallas and uh, the, the the resources of the police department. And as an oversight body over the police department, I believe this body has a role in evaluating what the police department is being asked to do and whether, uh, whether uh, I would say to the board that public safety uh, is not governed only by the police department. There have been meetings convened across the city of Dallas by Council Member Thomas and others about the many reasons uh, related to uh, historic and chronic underfunding of particular areas and particular needs in the city uh, that are contributing to what we're seeing uh, from a public safety perspective. The police are being asked to do far too much, um, and I believe it's this body's role to, to make recommendations about uh, about what is an appropriate role for public safety in this city and where the city should be resourcing other places so that the police department isn't having to take on every public safety issue here in Dallas. Thank you very much uh, for all of your work and for the time. Thank you. Hi, I'm Indiana Taylor. I am... 9626 uh, Dale Glade, Dallas, Texas. I wanted to say last time I was a little upset, so I apologize for that. I do mean what I said, but I mean it in a, meant it in a different way. Uh, I won't mention any names, but I do want to mention their words. Disband the Citizens Police Review Board. It is an, an impediment to hiring more police. That is someone, let's just call her Sammy. Uh, and uh, they're here right now, and that's someone who I have to rely on to be a deterrent to bad actors in the police force. And when I say that I, that will not go unheard, those things are going, won't go unheard, and that action will be taken, I mean direct action. I'm a protester, I'm an activist, and those things will happen regardless, because that's what I'm about. And I mean those things, and if that's a threat, that's, that I mean that threat, that's a promise. Okay, and okay, so if, if you're threatening, so, so you this, is, this, threatening, is, that, this is a threat, this is a threat of, of protest. This is a threat of protest, and I mean that. So mm -hmm. that is what I want to say. But I also want to say this, um, because the, <laughs> I don't think you understand. This is not history doesn't happen in a vacuum. Mm -hmm. So when I see someone obstructing justice. We can't wait for a mistake to happen. The mistake has already been made. And we can't wait for another mistake to happen for that person to go. I don't want my body to be the next one. And I said nothing about Sammy or whoever it may be uh, to have been on somewhere. And we already know what they believe. There's, there's no other questions about it. So. Whatever you feel about it, that's what I mean, thug life. Mm -hmm. 
Hello, my name is Minister Dominique Alexander, President and Founder of the Next Generation Action Network. Um, as I was walking into tonight um, regarding this meeting, um, um, I heard someone speak about reaching out to me. And um, I, I know one of the things as a community activist, I've always published my cell phone number. It's 469-734-7580. No one has e never had a, a problem with getting in contact with me. And also I have three fantastic staff members that check my emails regularly and they have never had a problem with anybody um, contacting me or emailing me requesting a meeting. Um, so I'll start off by saying this. One thing you would never do is define uh, Minister Dominique Alexander's actions of activism in a racist connotation because one thing I'm not is a racist. Um, one of the things I want to clear and point out, we reached out to Councilwoman uh, uh, Paula Blackman to keep a white man in place instead of appointing the person who she appointed. We asked Paula Blackman to keep a man that has been a lawyer for over 45 years in place. We asked her to keep a man that has literally been a former city attorney and also has represented the Dallas Police Department and other local jurisdictions in officer-involved shootings cases and different things of that nature, and that person is Dave Labrick. So if anybody is going to talk about our activism in this coalition's actions in a racial connotation, that is a huge, huge, hugely misinterpretation because one thing we have not, I think one of the things is, is that this board needs to understand the coalition that has created what you stand on and what you represent right now was one of the most diverse coalitions this city has ever saw regarding police accountability in this city. And I stand behind that statement. And I ask that everybody that was a part of the coalition, if you are here, please stand so that they can get a real quick understanding of the people who represent. And please don't never say that we did anything in a racial connotation. One of the things I want to also say, I thank you for speeding the process regarding Dave, uh, uh, Diamond Ross. And also I want to say about the rule regarding signing up to speak. Uh, not only the park board nor the planning commission, one of the most important boards in this city, do, do they have a rule where you sign up to speak. You come to the meeting, you sign up. That is a very suppressive rule and just because the city council has it does not mean that it is right. I ask that this board vote against that rule because remember this is the office of community police oversight. So it's important for people to understand and engage. And guess what? Many people don't know that they want to speak until they get here. So this is for to represent the community. So if the community walks through that door, remember, this is not a usual entity. If the member walked through that door, the member should be able to speak. Thank you. Just, just to clarify, those that want to speak, public mic, they won't have to sign up. It's just for the first 15 minutes, the first five people will, will sign up when they get here before the meeting. Only The only um, sign-ups in advance are if you want to speak specifically on an agenda topic. If you just want to speak, you don't have to sign up. My name is Joel Wassinger, District 2, and first of all, I want to thank this board, uh, the majority of the board, and its chair for their excellent work. Um, I thought that the second meeting, in sharp contrast to the first meeting, uh, went extremely well. Um, thank you for your leadership, and um, I appreciate, as others have mentioned, that there's been action taken uh, to address the Diamond Ross situation. Um, and. There was a lot of misinformation, as, as others have alluded to, uh, in the comments before this meeting. And, and I just want to say, uh, and I'm usually not this forthright to speak on behalf of others, but all we wanted at that first meeting was the opportunity to speak. And, um, and, and you know that. And, and, and this isn't a criticism of you. But for those who think that activists came here to cause trouble, there may be times when we come someplace to cause trouble. That wasn't our point that evening. And um, so uh, what, what interests me 
about the situation is at the first meeting, it was, as usual, the police who instigated violence. We came to speak. We were denied the opportunity to speak. Uh, the chief cut you off, uh, Mr. Chair, and then, without even addressing us, pushed us out of the room, attempted to push us out of the room. That was the uh, kerfuffle that happened that night. And we see, as usually happens, that, especially when people of color are involved, that the victims of police brutality are demonized and criminalized. We have one member of this board, and again, I won't name names, um, but who went on the Ricky Roberts radio show and talked about uh, the dangerous folks that were at that meeting not even pointing out that it was the police who had weapons, the police who initiated the use of force. So, and, and then we have others, we had folks come up in the last meeting talking about beleaguered white folks. And as Dominic has pointed out, nobody has said that this board needs to be all black or brown. I don't see that there would be a problem if it were, but um, we, we just want this board to be able to perform its function. Hold up, hold up. Is there a problem up there? Okay. Okay. As I as I mentioned earlier, as I mentioned earlier, as I as I mentioned earlier, we're going to be respectful. As, as, as I mentioned earlier, we're going to be respectful. Mm. All right, let's, hey, let's, let's, let's be respectful, everyone, let's be respectful. No taunting, no responding. Let's, Let's be respectful. If you can't be respectful, ignore, okay? So, Sorry, I apologize. Uh, excuse, excuse me, ma'am. Excuse me, ma'am. Ma we have one person at the mic. That is the only person that should be speaking. Thank you. I, <laughs> I, 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 I did actually want to point out that the loudest voice at that first meeting and the one person who shouted an epithet at that meeting was a white man who happens to be the husband of one of the board members, one of the board members who doesn't believe this board should exist. And just as now, he helped to instigate that situation. And so I, it, it is important that that be on the record. And it is important that we don't have a meeting like this and only black folks are told that they need to calm down and be respectful. And I, yeah. And again, Mr. Chairman, that, that's meant as no disrespect to you. I know you have a difficult job, but, but I do think, I, I think that words like the racist epithets that were used by a couple of the first speakers, or the, the one speaker that I recall, those should not be allowed in this space. Um, and, and I know that I, I was astonished when that happened, so I can only imagine how that struck you. Um, but again, thank you, and uh, we appreciate this opportunity and, and look forward to those who are committed to this work um, continuing the work, and those two board members, they know who they are, we know who they are, who aren't committed to it, uh, would go on to other things. Thank you. I'm Stacia Holt. I'm representing the District 9 and many others. Mm -hmm. I want to start off with we always point out the police officers are your protesters, but you know what? If you remember, when you're making a call for an issue of someone been shot or someone that got beat up, it's that 911 operator. Your 911 operators are deciding what call is important. Me and my child, my sister, and her two kids were in a car accident and it hit and run. That operator on there sat and said, well, sorry, but somebody else was injured worse. Well, I'm standing here with metal all up and down my spine because the police and the operators don't come out. 
on both sides of the parties, we do have people that hurt, people that have lost a loved one. As much as, yes, the officer that shot a person in their own home, but also an in, a, a, a citizen shooting our police. We need to come together, unite, not separate. That is what Jesus wanted us to do. If we don't come together as one, Satan will have us all. You can call anybody racist, but we all bleed the same color. And it's called red. It's called the blood because that's what Jesus put us in. It's what God made us each and formed us all unique. If we were all the same, this country would be a boring place. That's what makes us all special with the freedom of speech to speak our voice. You can be a Democrat, you can be a Republican, you can be what? But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what party we're at. It's are you a child of God? Are you forgiven? Because good people don't go to heaven. Forgiven people do. So let's find love, compassion. Quit this keyboard warriors of hate. Let's bring a circle of prayer. And let's save our country from the true terrorists that are coming to our country. Because that's what's coming in this city right now. It's not what the police did. It's not what that thug did. Because they're not a thug, they're human beings. And if we're not going to stand up for the American people before the illegal immigrant, this country will be lost. So I ask you, let's come together as one. Let's not separate each other. Who cares of the lies? Let's state the facts. Let's state the, who the real police are and who are the ones that are just there for the money. And let's state the real people that are on the board who actually care about the people because that's what God would want us to do. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, I'm Charity Rigdon, 2948 Groveview. I'm also with the Afia Center, and Afia Center is a reproductive justice organization. If you're not familiar with reproductive justice, it's um, the right to parent your child, um, not, excuse me, have a child or not to have a child, to parent your child in a safe environment, or also to parent your child without state sanctioned violence, which means police brutality. Um, one night I was standing outside and I heard this lady getting beat by her boyfriend. Um, he was beating her so bad that I ran inside to grab my phone, but in the black community, we're, with the policing going on now, police is not the first thing we run to. But I also know if I went to intervene, he probably would have whooped me too. He was screaming that he was going to kill her and everything else. Um, the police was called on my behalf. The police was called. Um, and as I was calling, they also said that she was calling it in. So I sat out there and I waited. No police showed up. Not one. So I'm not understanding. Um, I guess you can say where I live will be kind of considered the hood. But the thing is, if she's calling it in and she's pleading for help, why is no one showing up? This lady was literally beat. I could hear her. I can hear the punches being hit in her face. I could hear that. And no one showed up. I just wanted to know, if it was a white woman, would y'all have come? Would they have come? What's, what is going on here? Nobody, the police are not showing up. I don't understand. And like I said, we already don't want to call the police. But I also didn't want to get beat up either. So what are we going to do to people who have to call the police and don't have no one else to call? If it was a white woman, like I said, I bet they would have showed up real quick. I'm Max Smith, Council District 13. Good evening. I don't have any complaints, but I have some suggestions. Uh, one of them is, is that all you folks need to ride with the police officer. You need to do it on a regular basis so you understand what they do and why they do it and what sort of circumstances arise. Because what you hear is people come down here and say the police did this and the police did that. You know, police officers are individuals. Most of them are very good people. There are a few bad actors, and that's your job is to weed out the bad actors and see that they pay for what they do. But 
you know, you can't just tar the whole department with the same brush. When you, when you hear in the media quotes, the police did this and that's terrible, it was a police officer who did that, not the whole crowd, and you need to keep that in mind. Uh, second, I, I think that you ought to try to gauge community opinion. I think every one of you ought to pick 30, 40 people in your council district and call them on the phone and say, have you, had, have you personally engaged a police officer this year? Not, not your cousin's brother-in-law, but, but you personally. And, and how did that go? Were they courteous? Were they professional? Were they rude? Were they abusive? And see, you know, what, what the real story is in the community as a whole. And the last question is, do you think that police ought to be more aggressive? You think they're about right? Or you think they're not aggressive enough? And I think you'd be surprised by the answer to that. A few months ago, June and July, the Department of Public Safety put 15 officers in South Dallas. Uh, they pulled over a lot of people. At the same time, they arrested 500 felons. They confiscated 500 pounds of narcotics. They confiscated 100 guns. And there were no murders in July. No murders in July. People came down here and complained about that. I don't know if they came here, they came to the council and complained about it. But I don't know that the people who live in that neighborhood who have to balance being abused by the police and being abused by the criminals in the neighborhood feel the same way about it. There was a lot of good done there. And you, Mr. Chairman, you mentioned you can't put a price on human life, but we do. What we're saying is, is that all those traffic stops is too high a price to pay to save lives. You know, our murder rate in Dallas has gone from around 100, 110, three or four years ago to pushing 200 today. That's 80 lives. And the part of the reason for that is, is that we have a district attorney who won't prosecute crimes under $750. We have council people in, in the, in the, that are telling the police, back off. Well, when you back off, that costs those lives. That, that adds to the murders and the robberies and the rapes and everything else that goes with it. We have empowered the criminals and handcuffed the police. And we need to be very careful about doing that. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hi, it's Rick Lenoy again. Uh, I live in uh, East Dallas uh, in the Lakewood area. And um, I just want to say that I, in part, agree with the last gentleman. Uh, I do believe that most Dallas police officers really do try hard to do things like not kill people. <laughs> but, you know, they should not have to do that by going rogue against our own general orders. Because in the general orders that are currently in place, if you look at the last part where we have the response continuum, the last step says, yeah, it's okay for us to use lethal, uh, lethal response for aggravated aggression. And then when you get into the definition of that, you find out that that turns out to be pretty much what the officer on site interprets it to be, largely based on emotions, fear, perception, belief, and so forth. Well, thank goodness, so many of our officers go out there and secretly, I think, or at least very privately, have to say to themselves, I'm never going to pull my gun out and just kill someone dead. I don't want to do that. They make me wear it, but I have no intention of ever doing that. I'm going to use every means at my disposal to de-escalate. So I commend those officers, every one of them, and that's a wonderful thing. But they should not have to do that. It should not have to be them going rogue as opposed to this idea that only once in a while an officer goes rogue and doesn't follow the rules, and then someone gets killed. No, the rules say they can kill people. There's our problem. We've got, what, 1.3 million people in Dallas proper itself? 3,000 police officers, did I hear correctly earlier, roughly? Okay. You're not going to stop all the crime in Dallas with 3,000 police officers. And I beg to differ with the other gentlemen. You know, we can have 6,000 officers. We can have 10,000 officers. We can arm them with machine guns, and they can walk around and do all of that. But the real problem is the disparity in our community, this division, the fear that I've heard from many of the other persons expressed tonight, largely persons of color, 
And, you know, I get it. If our own police department in black and white says we kill people, we're allowed to kill people for something way less than what is in the Constitution, you know, like being convicted beyond a reasonable doubt in a court of law after due process, then maybe the death penalty can be issued. Well, for reasons way less than that, they can kill people, and they have been killing people. So, you know what? I, being a, a white guy, I don't, at least I can convince myself that I don't have to be scared to death day and night that my door is going to be busted open and me get shot because I didn't look at an officer in the right way. So this division is what has to go. And uh, I would like to know, just real quickly, can I file a complaint about those general orders? That's a question after my comment. Good question. Get back to me on it. Next meeting. So in other words, I, I understand we can bring individual complaints against an individual officer's action, but can we go after the very rules that our department operates by? Oh, I was going to say go ahead. Okay, I will do that. File, Thank you for file, your time. File I appreciate it. it. My name is Dorothy Patterson. I am not a citizen of Dallas. I'm a citizen of Mesquite. But I have two sons, and they are black males. And since the time that they were born, I told them, you were born with two unfair strikes. You were born black, and you were born male. In 2017, my son was murdered at the corner of Centerville and 635. In 2019, I have a son, my only child left. He was arrested and broadcast all over the news and he's still sitting there and my question is I am a realist and I, I deal with my issues real truthfully I'm, I'm curious as to why the detectives were so quick to arrest the son as I, I hate to say it this way but the good son the one with the degree from Texas A&M cum laude off of something someone said but then the one that was murdered nothing's being done I don't understand that. And then the disparities that are in the bonds being set on these inmates. There are people in Dallas County right now with the exact same crimes, but the bond on my son is ridiculous. It's over almost a million dollars. And then the same crime that someone else committed, I'm assuming black on black, is $200,000. But because I'm feeling that this is my son is black, white, $750,000 bond. Where is the justice in that? I don't understand how Dallas does their business, and it's sad, and I hate that I even have to be standing here, and I'm doing my best not to get emotional, because this is painful for a woman who has taught her children to abide by the law. First of all, they said, my good son, he evaded arrest. But yet, the witness says he's casually walking. But they initially stopped him on that. That is the token target that they used to retain our black men, first of all, before they even tried to put a charge on them. That was their first step. I went to co try to bond him out. They told me, oh, he's been charged with another charge. But this particular son, and the only reason why I'm here is because I know this son in my heart's of heart, you cannot tell me anything different because this little child has sat in a corner. When I told him to sit there and has not moved, I was on my way out the store. The sales associate was watching my son because he was so obedient. So this particular child, I'm willing to fight to the end for him. Not that I wouldn't fight for my other son, but wrong is wrong and right is right. My other son was dead wrong. But this son... I have a problem with it. And I think that the police need to be mandated. Somebody needs to do something with the way they make the arrest, the way they research the arrest, the way they question the alleged suspects. They need to do something. It is sad and it's, and it's, and it's ridiculous. And I'm heartbroken. I'm hurting not only for my sons, but for mothers of black boys like myself. And it's sad. It is really sad. And Dallas needs to do better. Really, you all do, seriously. It's sad. Thank you. Thank you. We have time for one more. Hi, my name's Blake. I'm from District 2. Um, excuse me if I don't speak very well. I'm sort of not the most outspoken person. Um, 
This is my first time coming to one of these, and it's already come to my attention that there are some people here who are acting in very bad faith who seem to be here just to oppose the existence of this board. And not only that, but they're instigating uh, situations among the crowd. And I think it's really embarrassing. And uh, it's even more embarrassing to hear that apparently this person is a spouse of one of the board members. Um, I hope that the board doesn't take it seriously, the outbursts that these bad actors have. And yeah, that's all I want to say. Thank you. Thank you. It is 728. Do we have a motion to adjourn? I move to adjourn. A second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Meeting adjourned at 728. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>